How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. So we are going to be discussing a highly requested subject today, which is our equipment and what we use every day to photograph, what we use to film, what we use to style our videos with, and Edit. everything in between. Yeah. And we also want to give a quick disclaimer that we are not saying these things are necessary for photography, videography, and what we are doing as bloggers, but it is what we use, it's what we love, and it's what we would recommend. So we started out with our phones. I don't know if you can see us. This is yeah. an inception right <laughs> and here. <here's> Barry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we kind of worked our way up with equipment over mm -hmm. time. We slowly bought things and upgraded our equipment. Um, so we're going to be breaking that down. But as Jasmine said, please don't ever feel like you need this specific equipment mm -hmm. to put out quality content. Because honestly, the iPhone is a perfect place to start. And yeah, the you portrait can, mode. You can really get some high quality uh, content. Yeah, so we are going to start with our cameras because that is the main thing that we use to develop content. And um, we both started with the Canon Rebel. I had the XSI and you had... I had the T5. Yeah, and they're great cameras. If you know how to use a camera, um, you can get really good quality content with those cameras. And one thing I want to note is if you're going to upgrade anything, you can start with those bodies but get a, a different lens. So. Yeah. The lens is really what's going to make or break your images if you're mm -hmm. looking for really high quality uh, photos. And another tip is we shoot in manual because we have more control that way and we also shoot in RAW which allows us more capability in editing. We'll talk about that later on um, but I just wanted to mention that here for those of you who want to get started with a DSLR. So if you've never used a DSLR camera before there are just three simple... <laughs> there are just three simple... Um, I guess functions that you really need to become familiar with, which are the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. We're not going to really go too much into that, but you can find a ton of information online about mm -hmm. it, and we'll link some things down below that have helped us. Yeah. So the first camera we're going to talk about is actually what we've been shooting our videos on more recently. We got the new Sony A7R 3 this year, right? The start of the year. Yeah. And um, at the end of last year we got it. Okay. And we've been shooting videos and photos with it. It's an amazing camera and it has so much capability, more capability than any other camera that we've used. So it's been a lot of fun to play around with it. Um, yeah, it's been, I mean, it's it's something different that we've always used um, cameras with mirrors and, oh. and Canon cameras. So this is a mirrorless full frame camera, which can be on the little more pricey side. Yeah. But I can't really show you the camera because it is in use now, but... We'll um, insert a clip right here of what it looks like. Yeah, and um, this is our first Sony camera. We were always using Canon just because that's what we started with. Our parents actually both gifted us our first cameras separately. Um, so we just built our arsenal from there with all our lenses and whatnot. Um, so we changed over to Sony and we are really happy with the outcome. Absolutely. Um, but we still do use Canon. Yep, so we... before we got this camera, sorry. I'm gonna grab it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. So before we got the Sony camera, we were using the Canon 80D. We still actually use it for some um, we video. Just, yeah, for B-roll and some second secondary angles when we're filming. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great camera. We love it. Um, it's a little bit different. The functionality is a little bit different with this, but um, I can't say enough good things about this camera. It is what we've been using for the past two years. And it is actually what helped us grow Sweet Simple Vegan like to where it is now. From when Chris moved to Los Angeles, this camera, I don't know, I'm, I love this camera. I don't want to ever get rid of this camera just because we have so much, I don't know, value. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, our, our content, if you take a look from when we started to when we upgraded scroll to down, this. Scroll down, guys, scroll down. <laughs> again, I want to preface that the, the, the camera doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. um, it's definitely helped us develop our craft mm -hmm. so so now we're going to discuss the lenses that we use so we have three lenses that we use on a regular basis mm -hmm. so we have a macro lens that is 100 millimeters and that's mm -hmm. great for getting really up close and personal with the food or whatever the subject you're shooting so yeah and we use it i just want to throw this mm -hmm. in we use it for both photo and video for um the end shots of our recipe videos we use the macro lens because we get that nice food porny shot mm -hmm. porny <laughs> and it's also, um, you're able to get really close to your subject, so with some lenses, uh, the focal length is, you have to be a little bit further back, mm -hmm. but with the macro lens, you can really get up there and get a nice crisp shot. And it's honestly probably the sharpest lens we have, because, I don't know, there's just something about it that... It's my favorite lens. It's really nice. And then next up, we have our 16-35mm to 35 millimeter that 
it gives more of a wide angle and it's more versatile than the 100 millimeters. So we used to use that when we would go out. Um, and we also use it for our overhead food videos because we, again, we can get really wide. We don't have to have the camera like up on the ceiling to film things. Um, we can get close up, but still be pretty wide with the um, frame. And it's really nice. We actually, I got it specifically to shoot landscapes when we were there. We went on a road trip two years ago. And, and next up we have our 24 to 70, which is on our Sony right now. And we got this for two reasons. For one reason, it's just we needed a lens for our Sony because we weren't sure if our adapter was going to work with our Canon lenses as well as we wanted it to. And, um... Which I guess it does, it, but yeah. there, it's not perfect, mm -hmm. so... Having this lens that is specific to a Sony camera definitely comes in handy. Yeah. And the second reason is that it's super versatile. So um, it's 24 to 70 millimeters, which we can get a wide angle shot or we can get really up close and focused with something. So if we're going out to shoot for the day and we don't really know what we're going to do, we'll probably bring this lens mm -hmm. just because um, we'll be able to... We won't have to worry about switching the, the lens for different situations. So... This is our workhorse lens, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. And next up for our vlogging, we mainly use the Canon G7X Mark II, and I've been using this camera basically since the start of YouTube. I tried a Sony before, but what it didn't have was the flip screen, which is something that I found necessary for vlogging. And next up is our Joby Gorilla Pod, which comes in handy with vlogging, and it also acts as like a mini tripod. Um, so this one's gotten a lot of wear and tear, so it's pretty yeah, it's loose. Pretty loose now. So we don't trust it to like actually attach to anything. <laughs> yeah. um, but we've been using it consistently for two years now. Like every single day. Yeah. So it's been been through a lot, and it's still working pretty well. Um, we are going to upgrade pretty soon and just get a new one because it's kind of dangerous. I don't know if you saw our recipe video. I think it was two weeks ago. Where my camera just fell into the pot. It that was, is not an isolated incident. Yeah, so it was this. Um, but I just want to just give you a heads up that it will wear out eventually. And for our other tripod, we actually have two of these. It's a Vanguard, I don't know the specific name of it. Alta Pro, I think. There. Alta Pro. Alta Pro. Yeah, Alta Pro. Ooh. This is what we use to film most of our overhead videos. We actually have two of them, and the other one is on the camera that we're shooting with right now. Go for it. No, 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 you go. I was just going to mention that we got these mainly for our overhead videos because it has a boom, which is an arm that goes at a 90 degree angle. Yeah, I think, it, I think it'll go 360 degrees actually, Damn. which is crazy. But yeah, it, it'll go like directly overhead so we can get those aerial shots for the food videos that mm -hmm. we film. Uh, the only thing is you'll, you'll need a weight to, to balance out the, yeah. the camera, otherwise it's going to fall over. Mm -hmm. And then next up is the lighting, of course. That's what we use for our recipe videos, and that's what we're actually using right now. And it was a lot of trial and error using artificial light because we had never used it before. And we're still not perfect with it by mm -hmm. any means, so yeah. almost every video we're tweaking it in one way or another to, to get it perfect, mm -hmm. but we're getting close, I hope. Um, yeah, um, our newest thing is bouncing the light. Um, off of the ceiling, off of the walls, just so that it isn't harsh and directly on our faces or on our food. And we learned this from our friend Damien and also from Caitlin from From My Bowl. She does it as well in her recipe videos. And it looks way more natural than it would when it is directly on the subject. So we will show you how they are set up right now just so you can see what it's looking like for this exact setting and video. Um, how we're getting this light on this right now. <laughs> and we have three, three lights with mm -hmm. soft boxes over them, so it kind of mutes the, the light and it doesn't make it as harsh. Uh, they're not the best quality lights, but it was definitely something that we were able to get to, I guess, experiment and um, mm -hmm. really figure out what we were doing when it comes to artificial light. Yeah, we didn't want to spend a lot of money on light initially because, again, like he said, we didn't really know what we were doing and we wanted to figure it out as we went on. And so. This is, we just use artificial light for filming. Mm -hmm. uh, we shoot all of our photos for, with food, yeah. with natural light. Um, we're going to have to learn how to use artificial soon because we are moving to a very gloomy area. Um, but So we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. We'll keep you updated on, on that. And now that we've talked about what we use to shoot our content, now we'll cover what we use to edit our content. <laughs> yep, so we... Mainly use the Adobe Suite, so thankfully from Jasmine's um, college. college, we were able to get this awesome deal on the entire Adobe Suite, so we ended up getting it for like $40 a year, 
when it's typically fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Um, but the main Great programs. Oh my, it's it's been a <laughs> lifesaver, honestly. But the main programs we use are Lightroom, Photoshop. I guess that's it, right? Yeah, Lightroom that's it. and Photoshop. Uh, and then Jasmine uses Final Cut Pro to um, edit videos. Yeah, so going back to what we mentioned earlier, we shoot in RAW so that we have more capability uh, capabilities with editing on Lightroom. We're able to lower the highlights, bring up the shadows, really refine the images. So what you'll notice when you do shoot in RAW, you'll ex you'll import it into Lightroom and it'll be a really flat and dull image. Mm -hmm. But that, that program gives you the ability to really develop the photo and bring it to life. Mm -hmm. So it's really a cool process. So when you shoot in JPEG, you'll get a full vibrant photo, but in RAW, you'll get a more dull photo in post that you'll be able to bring to life yeah. beyond that JPEG yeah. that you'd have. And you have more capabilities um, in terms of being creative and adding your own flair to the photo, so that's pretty cool. And um, in terms of Photoshop, we mainly use it for three things. Um, the first is for our thumbnails for all of our videos, for our YouTube videos and our Facebook videos. Um, and then the second is the Pinterest images that Chris puts together for I'm our, the Pinterest king, guys. <laughs> for our Pinterest. And then last but not least, we have started recently putting together GIFs for our blog. Um, GIFs, GIF. I read that it was GIF like the peanut butter, but whatever you call it. Tomato, that's... tomato, guys. <laughs> Fair. And honestly, we have a very limited knowledge of Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, we just use very basic functions in it. And yeah. Like Jasmine said, just to, to assemble those basic um, and very simple, um, I guess, what, I don't know what they would be called, but projects. Projects, yeah. And then um, in terms of Photoshop, there are a few YouTube channels that I have been watching recently just to get ideas and just to learn a little more about the program. It's not necessarily on things that I'll be using myself, um, but it just it's just cool to learn those small um aspects of the program so I'll link those channels down below if you want to learn more about Photoshop. And in terms of video editing our content is actually edited on two different applications. The first is Final Cut Pro which is what we use um, for our vlogs and the videos that we edit. Um, it's very user friendly. I started with iMovie but I moved over to Final Cut because there's more um, functionality. Yeah more functionality. Um, a lot a lot of different options in terms of like transitions, text, um, it's more customizable, I've, as I've seen. Um, and it's still really user-friendly. Yeah, totally. And um, Adobe Premiere is what our video editor uses for our recipe videos. So Chris's friend in New Jersey actually started working with us late last year on our videos, and he does an amazing job. It's not that we don't like to edit. It's just it's a little bit time-consuming. Mm -hmm. So one thing to keep in mind, if you do decide to get into doing recipe videos, and videos in general, it is super time consuming. Yeah. So we do our best to minimize the work because we have mm -hmm. so much other things going on. Yeah. Um, and Ray is awesome at what he does. So yeah. And he also has a brand of his cousins called Nerdcore. They make awesome videos. If you want to check them out, we'll link it down below and in the cards. And he is a video editor that's open to taking on more clients. So if you want a video editor, then hit him up. It is always in the description. True story. And next up, we are going to just briefly talk about um, editing our photos on our phones. We use three apps mainly. The first app is Visco or VSCO. I'm not entirely sure how you say it. Um, but what I like about the app is that um, you can copy and paste your edits from one photo to another. So I figured out the style of the photos that I like for my page and I just copy and paste it onto my new photos and then just tweak it from there and then I post it on Instagram. And then we also use Instagram. Um, we go into the basic editing settings mm -hmm. and from the photos we've edited on Lightroom, we'll just kind of tweak it a bit more. Uh, I like to sharpen my photos just a bit and then there's a setting called structure that I like to use. Um, but other than that, be sure not to over edit your photos. Mm -hmm. um, we don't we use the filters on Instagram. No, avoid that at all costs. <laughs> and um, yeah, just minimal editing just to like really make them pop, I think, mm -hmm. is, is the key. Just the photo. The third app that I use is Snapseed. What I use it for mainly is the selection tool on the app. So basically it gives you the ability to edit just one area of a photo. You can do a similar thing on Lightroom or Photoshop, but it gives you that capability on your phone. And it's super easy to use. Um, so if there's like a dark area in a photo, or like an unsaturated area in the photo that I want to tweak, I just go in there, I use the selection tool, I edit it, and then it's perfect. And there you it go. It takes like two minutes. 
So that's everything we use to edit our photos, and now we'll briefly go into what we style our photos with. So for this part of the video, we're going to shift right around the corner because we have our props. Um, we have a whole shelf over yeah. there. It's chaos. We're going to have to clean it first, <laughs> so the second half of the video might be filmed tomorrow. <laughs> But um, yeah, we're going to cover everything that we use to style our photos in terms of like backdrops, props, plates, utensils, everything in between. Let's talk about where we got everything. So let's go. The first thing we're starting off with over here are our surfaces. I'm behind the camera too, guys. Chris is right there. <laughs> and um, we have, I guess, four main surfaces we work with. So these are from a brand called Eclectic Lab Designs, and they make backdrops specifically for food photos, I believe. You can use them for anything, but um, a lot of their products are geared towards food photography. And they make um, custom boards as well as they have some designs you can get online as well that are, are pre-made, so all of them are double-sided. This one has dark gray and black. And then our next one is light gray, and it has white paneled wood, if you can see that. And we didn't start off with these. We actually just invested in these what? Some late August. last year, yeah. Yeah, late last year. And we also have these marble. Ooh. So we have some marble. These are real marble, so they're heavy. You can also get um, some surfaces that look like marble. They're faux marble from Eclectic Lab Designs. They're a lot lighter. Um, but I wanted to show you these because Chris actually got this for me from Sir La Tab, right? Mm -hmm. for, Christmas, for Christmas two years ago. Yeah. And then this one is also from there, but... I think this is usually like 50 to $80, I don't know the exact price, don't quote me on that. But I was able to find it on Craigslist for 20 bucks because someone in the area was selling it because they're moving. So I would highly encourage you to look at Craigslist, at yard sales. A lot of the stuff that we have gotten over the years are from, sorry, excuse my phone, are from that sort of thing. Um, estate sales are great for that too. And what can we go over here? Oh, one more thing to mention. So we used to have a wooden fence outside and when my parents replaced it, I asked if they could save the wood for me because it was worn wood that was perfect for food photography and I just pile them together when we do photos. We also have used these in videos, I believe, right? And we have a table outside that Jasmine found on the side of the road. Yeah, so that's where I was going to get to next. Um, we actually found two of our surfaces. One of them we've actually parted with um, last week, I think we gave it to Goodwill because we were done with it and we got a new black surface. But anyways, we found two surfaces. We'll insert photos here um, on the side of the road. Someone was throwing them out because the legs had broken, which were great for us because we didn't want the legs on them. So I cut off the two extra legs and they were great surfaces. So, And then next up we have a reflector. So I'm going to kind of swivel this around here. So this reflector actually, just the reflector itself, you can get on Amazon for like $15. And it has a silver side, gold, it can act as a diffuser like this, which you could take the cover off. And um, yeah, it's like 15 bucks. And we never used to have a stand. I actually just got this as a Christmas present this past Christmas. But um, we were just leaning it on like Oh, anything. we would we and would we would rig up some weird things. <laughs> yeah, very weird. Um, and then we also have this which is a diffuser. And we put this over the window, which is right here, because it, there's very harsh light midday here and we want to be able to shoot at all times of day um, or as best that as best we can so that definitely comes in handy and we also have a reflector screen for yeah for Forgot. the large Forgot one about that so this is just a cover that you can put on it to turn it into a reflector as well and last but not least I'm gonna keep this brief but I just wanted to show you all of the props that we've acquired over the last five years basically and we've gotten things, we've gotten rid of things, and what I found is that if you go to secondhand stores, yard sales, estate sales, places like Home Goods and Marshalls, you can get really nice um, props for your photos at a lower price than you would at like Sur La Tab or that, that kind of store. Um, we don't want to spend a lot of money on our props because we have broken so many. They fall during photo shoots, they can crack, they break easily. And since we're moving them around the house and doing a lot of, again, movement with them, um, they're very likely to break. So I would just suggest not investing in really expensive props. I don't know, that's just me. 
Um, so a lot of this we got again at Home Goods and yard sales and all that that I mentioned. And um, we were gifted some things. And what we try to do now is we didn't do this always, but we try to keep everything organized um, by item. So we have like plates over there. We have most of our bowls over here, and then here we kind of have miscellaneous items that don't really fit um, well on either side. We have our wood here. We have our pots and um, pans that we use for our recipe videos as well as our bento boxes somewhere in there. And then we have our um, towels, mop beans. <laughs> <laughs> and that is basically it. I also do want to mention that we do a lot of food photog freelance food photography and photography for different brands that we work with. So all the stuff that we have is not necessary for having a food blog. It is kind of too much for just having a food blog, I, I would say. Yeah, um, it's a lot. We do have a lot of extra stuff, and we have been, again, gifted stuff, and my mom was nice enough to give us some of the stuff from the kitchen as well for building our arsenal here. So So we use this to bring on shoots and mm -hmm. wherever it may present itself to be useful. So yeah. That about wraps it up. I hope this wasn't too in-depth, and again, we want to reiterate that none of this stuff is necessary. Please start with what you have, get creative, and... It's really about the content you're putting out. I mean, yeah. making it look nice is, is great, and you can do it with just an iPhone. So mm -hmm. You can do it with a surface you found on the side of the road, like we used to. So we hope we answered the questions that we get asked frequently about our equipment and our behind the scenes of our blog. And, and if, do you want to add anything <laughs> else? I was going to say, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let us know what you're using, if anything mm -hmm. at all, and... Um, if you have any more questions for us, we can do more videos like this. This was this was fun. It was very interesting because we don't really do things like this. So, yeah. <laughs> and one thing I'd like to say, we pretty much never script anything, so we're always on the fly. That's why yeah. sometimes we hesitate with things that we're thinking about and that doesn't come out correctly. So oh. that's the reason why. Yeah. But thank you guys again. We appreciate all the love and support, and we'll see you guys soon.